Now we're gonna take a second to thank our patrons. And just as a wee reminder, if you'd like to support me and by doing so support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Lindsay M. Dillon. So in the House of Flame, we have Birdie Tam, Jade Smith, Cheryl Eisenhower, Cynthia Johnson, Francie Dillon, JS, Katie Grant, Natalie Curry, Ed Pokela, Spaghetti, Spaghetti Sandwich. Spaghetti Sandwich. I love that so much. <laughs> okay. Now in the House of Stone, we have Allison Connors, Krisha Dolan, Leah Tab, Liv Madeline. And now for our blessing this week, may the spirits of the wind dry your pots evenly. I just farted. Ew. Okay, so quick note, we say in this episode that we're gonna talk about reels and short form video, um, but we ended up talking so much about just photography that we're actually gonna split this episode into two separate episodes. We got so lost in the sauce. We got lost in the sauce, lost. talking about photos. So, so this episode is just gonna be talking about photography, just photos, and then the next episode, we're gonna be talking about reels and videography and like short form video and how we do that. So, um, sorry for the lies. Okay, you're gonna get, oh no, you'll get more content. More content. Oh, oh my God. Oh, no. My Lord, leave good reviews so you get more content. Please do. Hello. Hello. Good morrow. Good, good day. Good. Salutations. Morning. Hello. Today on the Mud Peddlers, we're going to be talking no, about don't stop it. Cortana. Oh my! Oh, I love I'm, Cortana. I'm here to make my voice and appearance sound appealing. Oh no! no I, I binged Halo over the weekend. My apologies. Did you? I did. Yes. So good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy. Before oh before Destiny, I was so mad into Halo. Oh. Mad into Halo. Okay. All right. We're gonna have to do like a like a side episode. Just yeah. Out we're about gonna Halo, have to. But. Today, we're going to be talking about photography, yeah. and we kind of talked about photography on one of our previous episodes. I cannot remember which one. Talked a bit about it. A bit about it, yeah, but essentially what we're going to be covering today is a combination of just how we approach our photography in terms of like actual photos, and then how we approach our more like videography as well for things like, well, for you, your YouTube, and then also for like short form video, the meaning tick like the tick ticks, yep. <laughs> the tick ticks and the rolls, yep. the TikTok and, and the reels. reels. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And the, and, the, and, and the Instaphage Pam and the, grams. Yeah, definitely. And All the of that. MySpaces. MySpaces. Can we bring back MySpace, guys? Please don't bring back MySpace. I want to bring my back. My, no, I want it. Sl <laughs> it's slowly to like. I want to bring Mac MySpace. <laughs> I want to bring space my back. Yes. Yeah. I want my sexy the back. The mother socials don't know how to stop. Act. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stop. All right. So before before this goes too far off the rails, yeah. why don't we start out with describing our our kind of basics for how we approach our photography. So let's yeah. start out with you. How do you, if you were to just kind of summarize yeah. how you approach your photography, how do you do that? So the first thing I concern myself with is good lighting. Mm -hmm. The good lighting usually comes from a sunlight source. Okay. And, and you use direct sunlight most of the time, right? I mostly use direct sunlight unless there's a vibe going on. And when I say vibe, I mean like... If it's rainy and it's cloudy and it's overcast <sighs> and I wanna I wanna take a picture of like a nice blue cup mm -hmm. that kind of goes with like the watery background, I'll do that. Yeah. But there has to be uh, a motif, if you will. There mm -hmm. has to be a message or there has to be a vibe about it. You know? Okay. But lighting is like A1. And if that means you have to buy yourself a light box or you have to buy yourself uh, a little what are they called? Halo lights. Halo. Halo. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay's okay. been binging Halo. I have been. I'm very yes. happy about it too because Halo is the gateway drug to destiny. <laughs> That's great. It really That's is. Great. If you have to get yourself like a light, you just need some source of direct light and then you can move on to like surround light where now I have three different lights in my studio. One on the side, one on the front. So that way I can go, okay, I can take the picture from this side or I can put one above. I can take the picture from a top down view. You know, you just want different angles and that would be my second point. Mm -hmm. My third point is just have... And also, just for, uh, for framing, this is yeah. more like how you approach it. Yeah, so this is how I yeah, approach it. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So we're going to cover, like, just general, like, tips for people to take away. Oh, but yes. But this is, like, kind of more how you specifically do your setup. Yeah. How just so I, you know. Yeah. yeah. How I specifically do my setup is I make sure that I have a good source of light. I make sure that I have a good background. Like, um, I will more often than not take my stuff outside, and I will end up photographing. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll end up taking photographs on rocks, uh -huh. behind trees. Yeah. I like natural stuff because mm. clay is more of an earth medium. So I really like to, you know, put it in nature and be like, oh, wow, the earth. Ooh. Oh, okay, you know, okay. You know, I have a metal table, but, like, I feel like the metal table is cold. Mm. And um, I, I don't know. I feel like if I put it on a metal table, it sends the message of, like, I'm just trying to get you to look at the cup. Uh, I don't care about the aesthetic at all. Uh, I just want you to know that this is the item you're going to buy. And me. there you go. Oh, okay. You know? Okay. And I, I prefer I prefer the warmth to come through the picture rather than, you know, yeah. robotic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you like so you like having natural backgrounds because it yeah. evokes a feeling of like warmth and nature, and oh, yeah. that's part of your like branding. You, you visited say. the Shire, <laughs> and you went into the backyard of <gasps> some random hobbit's hole. Did we get? Did, <laughs> did we? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I cannot. Um, and you Lord. found a cup laying mm -hmm. on the ground, and you're like, what's this? And he's like, oh, it's a cup my friend gave me a long time ago. There's a bunch back there. And you're like, can I have it? And he's like, yeah. And that's what that picture is. Oh, you just found it in the grass. I like that. And it looks good. It does. It's very earthy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is, a, this is an observation that I'll make about your yeah. work and your photography. Yeah. So from what I see, because a lot of your work is very heavily focused on glazes, mm -hmm. you also tend to have a, like a higher saturation and it's yeah. very like bright and vibrant yes. and, and like colorful, but not necessarily in that like Lisa Frank kind of colorful way where yeah. it's like unicorns and sparkles and like that kind of thing. Not that there's anything wrong with that, yeah. but like- in That's terms your aesthetic. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. For my work, like my, in general, my glazes tend to be more, more muted, like yes. stone, like matte black is my favorite, is one of my favorites. Like I have a couple metallic glazes, but mm -hmm. they all have like a sort of more aged look to them. And that's one yeah. of the- like overall aesthetic points that I want to go for in my photography is highlighting this idea that these objects have had a life before this photo. So oh, yeah. I also like having natural backgrounds. Like my favorite, um, my favorite background is actually an old, um, like cupboard. Uh, oh yeah. Doors. Yeah, and yeah. I salvaged them from when we redid the studio. Mm -hmm. And I basically, I put that on my desk and I photograph it on that. But I will say a big difference between our ph photography styles is that I tend to have a much more simple background. Like my main idea is like, yeah, I want you to just look at the cup. Yes. Um, I would like to learn how to do more like set photography where there's actually like, you know, a sense of like creating a whole scene. Right. Um, but I have yet to develop the skills to uh, do that particularly well. It's a setup. It, take, it, it takes a while. Yeah. It's a whole D&D &D map. Like, yeah. Like you're painting minifigures on the side and whatnot. Like, <laughs> It's a whole work of art. Yeah. It's a whole work of art, yeah. for lack of a better term. That's actually something that we should cover is, um, like, maybe once I, like, kind of finish describing my overall aesthetic approach to photography is we should talk about how we, like, how we set up for photo shoots because oh, I yeah. think that's something else that we could definitely cover. Another thing for how I overall approach my photography is because I want it to have a, that kind of ancient or, like, aged look to it. Yeah. When I edit the photos... Uh, a couple things that I'll do is all so I use Photoshop Express mm -hmm. for editing my photos and this is all just on my phone like mm -hmm. I don't have a fancy camera I most of the time yeah. I'll use portrait mode on my iPhone so that the background is blurred it keeps the focus on the piece itself but there's still like you still get a sense of the background of because course. of you know it's still it's blurred but it's still there your brain will figure it out yeah your brain figures it yeah. out but I will, I'll use a fade feature on Photoshop Express, which essentially creates that kind of, almost kind of like an old Polaroid effect. Yeah. Where it looks, it's, it's like slightly, slightly faded. Mm -hmm. What that also does is it slightly seems to like desaturate the photo. So it's less visually like vibrant. Yeah. And then I'll also add a, like a, a very slight vignette so that the outer edges of the photo are slightly darkened so that it continues to focus the eye towards the mug itself mm -hmm. and it again continues to uh support that idea of something being like aged like an old photograph or yeah. having a like because mo most of the time we live in sacramento most of the time when i'm photographing my pieces it's when there's bright sunlight yeah. outside now i tend to use diffused light like i will photograph my work inside the studio with, but there's enough light outside to yes yeah. yes there's natural there's natural light yes for my pieces but Every, every time I edit my photos, and again, I don't, I don't do that much editing. Mm -hmm. I just do, I have like maybe three or four things that I tweak. Mm -hmm. Again, on Photoshop Express, I use the fade 
feature. I use the vignette feature and I also use the uh, clarity feature, which just kind of sharpens the image overall. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the three main things that I use. But I will try and make it look like it's not bright and sunny outside. Really? Like if I can, if I can have the feeling that this cup is sitting on a tavern table and it's cloudy and rainy outside mm -hmm. and there's like sorcerers in the woods and this sorcerer has just brought one of these cups in and is like you better not you know screw with them or they're yeah. gonna like do something to you that's the kind of vibe that i want my pieces to have mm -hmm. almost like they exist within the world that they are inspired from so let me ask you yeah when it's when it's like overcast and cloudy like that, mm -hmm. do you then still edit them in that way? Yes, I still, I still, um, I basically, what I've done is, um, so on Photoshop Express, mm -hmm. you can create a uh, kind of like a shortcut for oh, applying yeah. the same series of edits to a photo. So I basically, I tweak, I still tweak all three things just to get that consistency. Mm -hmm. It's just that it, I think in general, the photos just turn out better and I have less things that I need to potentially tweak. Yeah. Because every now and then, like, if it's, like, really bright outside and I'm photographing a shiny glaze, mm -hmm. I will sometimes tweak the highlights feature. So I will decrease, like, the, the, the brightness of the highlights. Mm -hmm. But when you I feel like when you tweak with photos too much, like... Like, essentially, I try and take my photos so that there's as little editing that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And the editing is not so much correcting mistakes, mm -hmm. but adding an aesthetic. So... So with my old phone, because mm -hmm. right now we're recording on my my now phone, uh -huh. with this old phone, it's like the it's one plus three or one plus two. This thing used to require a lot of editing for all my pictures. Okay, and that's in you. It's an Android. This is an Android. Okay, I'm just for our listeners. Who yeah, can't. this is an Android. Well, so there's an application called Snapseed. Okay, which is super easy and user friendly if you're if you're brand new at editing photos. Mm -hmm. It literally has like 17 options. You push edit. It edits the photos, but I used to have to edit all of my photos, uh -huh. and they felt super fake and cartoony mm. to a certain degree. Yeah, and yeah. And the the feel was off, and I didn't have a, a lot of uh, a good background setup. I didn't know what I could use because mm -hmm. you know whenever I bought a uh, a background, it it was like this feels fake. Mm. This feels weird to me. This feels yeah. set up. And then I was like, well, it's because I'm setting it up. Ah! Feel, that's why it feels set up. And I, not that they're not there's that, There's nothing you wrong know. with it. Yeah, I mean, it's just cause, not my aesthetic. Yeah, and, and that's fair. And that's fair. Because I think there yeah. are ways to, like, use use pre-bought backgrounds. Yes. And, you know, and, and set up the photograph in a way where it doesn't feel set up. 100%. If yeah. you have, like, a white wall and it's clean behind you and you want to get, like, a box and just put it there and with the white... Like, mm -hmm. God bless you. Go for it. Right? <laughs> but, um... I, I, I didn't like that, and I didn't want to go for that aesthetic. So when I got my new phone, mm -hmm. right, I think I have a OnePlus 8, OnePlus 9, 10, whatever, mm -hmm. just better phone, I no longer edit my photos. Oh, that's whatever great. Whatever picture okay. comes out on that phone is what you see on my website now. Nice. And I think the frustrating thing for me is that when I used to have the old phone, I used to edit all the pictures, but I take like 150 pictures. You know, Ooh. if I do a 50, a 50 load... On my website, I mm -hmm. take three pictures from three different angles of every single pot. Unless I have double pots, that's still over 100 photos. Yeah. So I would end up editing 150 photos. Oof. And then I would have to get my friend Quack to basically yeah. like help me put them on the website and do descriptions. Yeah. And it was just a lot of work for very little effort. For people who don't even care about the other photos. <laughs> By the way, if you go to my website and you hover over a photo long enough, uh -huh. it cycles through all the photos I took. Yeah. But nobody nobody really cares and knows that because it takes three seconds of hover time to, oh, okay, yeah. to move on. Or unless you, I'm assuming if you like click on the listing, then you can like click through the photos. I assume that as well. I mean, okay. I, I put multiple pictures. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I assume they're, they're displayed once you... But, um, no, with this new camera, the better camera, I don't edit at all anymore. That's really nice. That's and really sometimes nice. it looks better than the edited feature. But if you do need to edit your photos, I heavily, especially if you have Android, mm -hmm. I heavily suggest you get something called Snapseed. It's free. There, you don't have to pay for it. It's fantastic. Nice. And nice. You, could, you could crop stuff. You know, you have a picture of you and your ex. <laughs> <laughs> Crop that out. Crop and you that just out. don't need him in the picture anymore. <laughs> he said something about how artists bad, and you were like, "Gotta cut that out." Yeah, yeah, undoubtedly. Undoubt, just yeah, just do it. He's never beat the Ender Dragon. He's not based. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think I got like fifty percent of that. I can't like I get the sense. I get yeah. the context of what you mean. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He's never three sixty no scoped. Yeah. <laughs> Screw that guy. Screw that guy. Uh, <laughs> what a loser. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so since we've kind of talked about our our branding, like yep. the, the the feelings that we want our audience to kind of get, mm -hmm. since we've covered those things kind of so far, and we've covered a bit about editing, which I think is important. Of course. Let's talk a bit about like for folks who are maybe just beginning to photograph their work and they're kind of wanting to figure out some basic tips. Like, what advice would you give for folks taking photos? Because later in the episode, we're going to talk more about, like, reels and, and, you know, TikTok and things like that. Like, yeah. short-form videos. Yeah. But for, like, stationary photography, like, what what's some advice that you might give for, like, people who are just maybe mm -hmm. beginning to photograph their work and are like, how do I... My, my advice, firstly, is to get an editing program on your phone or whatever camera. If you prefer to take it with a uh, quote unquote real camera mm -hmm. and then transfer over to your computer and play with it in Photoshop, whatever, please go ahead. But get familiar with the aesthetic of your pot is my <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're in Seth California. Rogen knows. <laughs> yeah, Seth Rogen, he do. <laughs> he do know. Yeah. Um, get, get familiar with the aesthetic of the vibe of what you're trying to photograph. Photography. F photograph? Thank you. I got you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Get familiar with the aesthetic of your photograph and what you're trying to photograph for what you're trying to sell. Mm -hmm. Because I think, you know, I think if I took one of your tankards, one of your yeah. like steins, and I put it in the middle of the city, or if I did a photograph of it like on the concrete sidewalk, it would seem super out of place. Mm -hmm. If I took one of your like D&D style mugs and I put it like in a parking lot and ah. I took a photograph of it, I'd be like, that's still cool, but... That looks I, like some orc left their drink in the parking lot <laughs> of a 21st century car automobile yeah. line. Like, no, it just get familiar. I could, um, you know, I could almost see that working, but it definitely sends a different kind of message. 100%. Yeah, because I think, like, the aesthetic, like, like, because part of me wonders, like, okay, how do you identify, like, the aesthetic? Because in my mind, what, like, how do I identify the aesthetic? That comes to looking at color. Like, color is a huge thing, because, like, when huge. I think about... Okay, so a couple artists, just for our, our listeners, if you'd like a homework exercise, something to try, um, go look at, if you don't follow these folks already, look mm -hmm. at the photography of um, another Seattle artist. Her name is Katie Marks, mm -hmm. but on again on Instagram, and I think she's on TikTok, uh, another Seattle artist. And then compare her work with the work of Sage Cortez, who mm -hmm. does, on Instagram, she's hand and fire. Yep. Completely different photography yeah. styles. Ave too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Ave's aesthetic is very toy-like, mm -hmm. and just try to imagine that in different scenes and see which one you like most, and then analyze why. Yes. Yes. And and because that I think one of the hardest things, especially when you're photographing work, is trying to figure out like what is the aesthetic and how do I create a background where that works. Yes. What like, is the vibe? Yeah. And how to. Right, because <laughs> how to, how and to, for our listeners, the, the listeners Dante can't just gesticulated just like, grandly, very grandly. Yes, yes, bring it all together, bring it all together. <laughs> but I think, like, again, specifically when you're talking about color, like looking at Ave's, Ave Rivera's work or looking at another, Se another Seattle artist's work, both of them have very bright colors, mm -hmm. uh, vibrant colors. It's very friendly feeling. It's very inviting. Yes. It's very vibrant. It, vibe, yeah, it has yeah. that feel. When you look at Hand and Fire's work, there's more of like her color palette is much more like earth tones, mm. soft whites, black, charcoal, uh, earthy browns. And her the way that she photographs her work has more of a like cottage core sort of feel it's yeah. very like i'm in the country and i'm walking through grass i clearly have horses somewhere. i have horses somewhere they're not in the photo but you know they're there somewhere you know I have it looks them, like it. yeah so looking looking at color and comparing i think is a really good way of like doing what you're suggesting which is yeah. figuring out the aesthetic of your pot and also the aesthetic of your overall brand and you don't have yeah. to you don't have to know it from the start yeah just get comfortable with it yeah, like, and ex and experiment. Like yes. try try different try different setups. Try different colors. Um, yeah. Eventually, like the, I think the more you experiment, and the more you observe how other people do it, the more you'll kind of settle into your own style. You're trying to figure out how to express your work, and what message you want to send with your work. But in order to do that, you really need to play around with it a bit first. Yeah, that's that's really all we're saying mm -hmm. is get some editing software on your phone. Get some free stuff. Don't pay for the fancy stuff. 
I, I actually, full disclosure, I pay for Photoshop Express. I can't remember what the difference is if you pay for it versus not, but I was just like, I just want to keep being able to use the service. It's like five bucks a month. Yeah. But I really, but, but I think there are, like you're saying, a lot of really great options that are free. Well, I, w I went on YouTube and like looked up like the comparisons in between like Photoshop and this and that. And Photoshop seems to be like an, uh, more Apple and Mac based, I oh. guess. Like you can get it for android mm -hmm. but like for some weird reason it felt weird on android huh i don't know why okay. for, uh, for me and then i got snapseed and it was so user friendly that mm. i was like i'm just gonna use this cool like cool. i technically have photoshop x something express express yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's but like I, I don't use it because it just it, it's it's more comp it's i'm dumb no <laughs> <laughs> it, it's too complicated for me to use you know like i just want to push a button and then to make the photo lighter or darker or have the contrast change or the shadows change yeah or pop things and it's super like they give you sliders it's super easy with the little snapseed thing i use on android mm -hmm. but i don't think on apple they give you snapseed but i'm not sure uh but, yeah i'm not, i'm not sure i'm not sure i'll have to yeah. i'll have to look that up in the in, in the, the in the apple apple App store. In the app store. In the app store. But there yes. are comparable things to photo. Like, don't think you must use Snapseed or Photoshop. There are yeah. comparable things that will compete with those that yeah. are more your comfort level. That's mm -hmm. why I use Snapseed. It's just comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I'll suggest in terms of as you're experimenting and looking at different colors and different like aesthetics, um, keep track of what you like. Like it, whether you use the save feature on mm -hmm. Instagram where you can like create collections or for me, I'm a huge fan of Pinterest. Save every time you see a photo that's like, ooh, I like that. I may not know why, but save yeah. that photo and then like can, can make that a part of your creative practice is saving photos because eventually you're likely to find a pattern in the things that you like. And then the more that you see a consistent pattern, mm -hmm. the easier it is to recognize similarities of aesthetic elements that you can pick out to integrate into your own pieces. You know what is really good for that? Hmm. Go on Instagram and look up like home decor. <laughs> just it's oh it's, they're so good every because people who do home decoration as for like a living mm -hmm. they always go for some type of vibe they always go for a message in the way they design their rooms mm -hmm. and there's almost always a pot in there somewhere <laughs> almost it's like kung fu movies there's always almost like nice pottery somewhere mm. in the background mm. and they almost oh like the directors or the the home decorators always understand exactly where it goes yeah go go on instagram and look at like type in like home decor and you'll you'll see some nuggets mm -hmm. you'll see them mm -hmm. and something you could do when as you're doing that is like select maybe three or four words to describe that photo mm -hmm. like because a photo of a cottage versus a, co a photo of like a gamer's den yeah. is gonna be it's gonna have a different vibe but try practice using adjectives to identify those words mm -hmm. because that's again something that you can use to identify an aesthetic that you like mm -hmm. or even like if you've got other potter friends like maybe even us you know you can say like hey like i'm trying to work on my photography could you help me like describe what this image looks like. You can ask Lindsay. Yeah, you can ask me. I'll do my best. I'll do my best to respond to messages. I have too many of you in my DMs. Now. No, that's fair. That's fair. Oh, I've got yes, a, I've got I've got a smaller following. I can manage it at this point. I check my in, my YouTube comments once a week. Yeah. And reply to like fifteen of you, <laughs> and then I'm done. I'm like, yeah. nope, I'm good. No, that's fair. That's totally fair. But if it's not, you know, if it's not us, you can always ask like another another Potter friend or even just like somebody on the outside. Like I'll yeah. sometimes ask like my mom, like, hey, so like, how would you describe this photo? Your mom is you... so good at ideas. Ah, uh, she really, ow. Your mom. <laughs> I just slammed my hand out of the desk. Ow. You okay? I'm okay. That's how excited I am. That's how excited I no, am. My mom is actually really good mom at that marketing so stuff. Good. Yeah. For anyone who didn't listen to like episode, I think one or two one, of the yeah, yeah. Yeah. She, she came to... up with the name. Yeah. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah. We were over here like, oh, the forward path. Uh, uh, yeah, mud, mud, I mean, mud we, time. We, we got we got it really close. Uh, but I think Clayton. she was I think she was the last one who got who got who like crossed that final bridge to like the mud peddlers. And I was like, the mud peddlers! It was so easy for her too. It it's so like good. she opened the door and was like, it's the mud peddlers, and like closed the door. Yeah, I was like, like nerds. <laughs> God! Yes, yes. How do you not get it? No, no we're sorry. We're yeah. peasants. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she's just so good with <laughs> ideas. But point being, yeah. ask somebody else to describe your work mm -hmm. because sometimes they will be able to identify things that you can't see just because you're in it 99% of the 100%. time. 100%. It's so, like, um, you ever step away from your wheel 
to yeah. look at your piece, uh-huh. and it looks completely different. Totally. That it's kind of like that. Yeah. Where you're like in the sauce, right? Mm-hmm. You're making it. You're making it. You're making. You're like it looks really good, and you step back, and you're like, oh, what the bottom is super muffed. <laughs> oh my god, why did I not see that before? It's yeah. Because you're looking at it from a different. You can't see the forest from the trees. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's hard yeah. for it's hard for some of us. Another another thing that I think is an important part of photography, both in terms of like how we approach our own styles and like tips for people who are looking to photograph their work, is like different kinds of backgrounds. Mm-hmm. So you're a fan of having almost kind of more like scenes. Like you take yeah. photos with like rocks and trees and like different kind of things in the background. Earthy. So like yeah. 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 So there are obviously many different ways to choose a background. My way. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, Dante. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the only way. Only possible way. Everybody else. Um, <laughs> I tend to prefer a more simple background because I think it helps keep the attention on the pot itself. Sometimes, and I'm not saying that your photographs do that, but like one of the one of the issues that can come up sometimes with when folks are like photographing their work within a scene or within like a complex background mm-hmm. is that it kind of distracts from the central thing that you're wanting to you're wanting the viewer to focus on i agree so keep keep that in mind again having if you have like an iphone or something that like blurs the background Mm -hmm. um that's a really good way to kind of help keep the focus on the pot itself you can buy backgrounds you can also if you want to keep it really really simple you can always use a uh like a gradient background Mm -hmm. the only thing with that and then we kind of talked about this the first time that we tried to record this episode because we did this once before but then it was like this is too chaotic we got it was really chaotic we got we got to re-record it I think it it is important if you think at some point you might want to apply to like an art show. I think it is important to have that kind of background just oh. so that you can yeah you have it because you need that for like submitting to art shows. Yeah. But when you're photographing it for your social media presence, a white and black or just gradient background is going to have a really different vibe than something that's more like a scene. So just kind of keep that in mind in terms of whether you want something to have more of a clean sort of look versus a more scenic look. Not that either one is better, but those are kind of two ends of the spectrum. Right. I I think the main message we're trying to get across is that everyone's going to have a different aesthetic. Yes. And we want you to experiment enough to find your personal one. Yeah. Right. And if you have to look at other people's stuff, don't don't feel bad about that. I know yeah. plenty of people feel bad about like, oh, I feel like I'm copying. Oh yeah, no. I think it's an integral part of the process. Yeah, I th- I honestly think it is. It's mm-hmm. just don't like don't bite. Just you know, like you should have more tools on your belt from other people, in order to make your own house. Yes. To build your own whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think experimentation is a natural part of that. You mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. So angles, let's talk about angles in photography. You gotta get him in the angles. You gotta get him on the angles. You really do. So how how do you approach angles? Like when you're when you're photographing your work, like how do you how do you approach angles? So I I have three main angles. Mm -hmm. I like to have the sunlight hitting directly on my piece, and then I have to make sure my shadow. So if the sunlight is, let's say east, right, I can't have my back to the east and taking a picture of the pot direct because my shadow is blocking it. Right, right, So right. I have to have a side angle uh-huh. with the sunlight hitting it. Mm-hmm. Even if the sunlight is directly above, I just have to take my picture from the side yeah. and then do a little bit of an overhead, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But I like three different angles. That's one of them with the sunlight. Mm-hmm. The second one is usually I take a picture of the bottom so people okay. can have a, see what the foot is, see, get a feel for, um, sometimes I put like a little pedestal trimmed foot oh okay you know yeah, where, yeah, I, where yeah. I trim it like that you have one yeah 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 like yeah. that yeah so it's basically it's for our for our listeners it's where the it's like cup, a v yeah it's like a, it's got like a like a v shape in the foot of the pot yeah. it's like a, a raised foot as opposed to a completely flat one but it makes the piece look a tiny bit more elegant because it lifts it yeah versus sturdy like i have this one this one looks very sturdy yeah right <laughs> for, for again for yeah. our listeners right this one's just more of a cylinder with a base and a handle on it yeah and it's actually kind of great just on a side note i'm drinking out of one of your yeah. cups and you're drinking out of one of my cup. cups yeah it's, it's great yeah Aww. anyway carry on but um i usually try and get a profile of the bottom for that reason and then i try and get one more picture of where the glaze is the best. So if I was taking a picture of this this mug that I have in my hand with Lindsay's, I would have taken a picture on the inner lip right here because this is where the glaze looks the tastiest to me. Mm, right there. Okay. Yeah, I would yeah, give yeah. you that, and it's almost like giving you a little a little sense of the birthmark of the pot. Like oh. this one spot is where I think the glaze shines the best. Okay, so it tends to be almost like a macro shot where it's yeah. like really close up against the pot and it shows the kind of crystalline yeah. details. Of exactly. It. Okay. And that's yeah, why yeah, that's yeah. why I like this new camera that I got because mm-hmm. I don't have to edit as much to get the finer depth of the glaze. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I like that. I really like 
for lack of a better term, multi-dimensional glazes. Mm -hmm. I try mm -hmm. to stay away from like, oh, it's the color yellow, it's just yellow. <gasps> yeah. Or, oh, yeah. it's the color blue, it's just blue. Most of my blues and reds, if you look somewhere close enough, you'll see a deeper level of usually a type of runniness, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Like almost like um like micro crystals. Almost. Something like I don't that. know if that's like a term, but I'm it saying is, it. <laughs> it. It is, but like uh my Jeff Campana's mistake, my blue mm. that Jeff Campana made, but I put way too much cobalt in it. <laughs> it's just it's fantastic. But if you look at it really closely, it gets darker on textured surfaces than it does on smooth surfaces. Huh. On a smooth surface, it's just like one kind of grayish blue. Yeah, yeah. On a textured surface, it gets like this really nice deep blue. Ooh, nice. And I love that glaze. But I, I wouldn't be able to show that to you if I didn't get into the texture. Right, So I make right. a point to take photography or a picture of like one specific point so that one day when you look at the glaze real close, you can go, oh. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh. And I always try to get in the sunlight because, and this is, this is just me, right? But look at your mug you might have in your hand right now. Mm -hmm. And if it's a sunny day where you are, look at it inside and then go outside and look at it again. It's a completely different pot. <laughs> completely different. I actually hate when I go to tables and they don't put me near a window mm. because you'll never see the real colors of my pot. Yeah, I think your, yeah, your glazes in particular yeah. really like the quality of light makes a big difference on your pieces. Like I think for, for mine, there's not as big of a difference unless you're looking at like the saturation gold which really sparkles in the sunlight yeah. and it's just more of kind of like, a, it still looks good in not direct sunlight, yeah. but it just really sparkles in sunlight. Whereas I think most of my, or many of my other glazes like the uh, stone black or um, weathered bronze, like those glazes tend to not change that much in the sunlight, whereas yours do. Right, yeah, and it's just, it's just my aesthetic, but just kind of get comfortable with the lighting, especially. Mm -hmm. And I would say, just try and take a couple pictures. So if you're just starting out, I yeah. guess my final recommendation for this one segment would mm -hmm. be take different angled pictures to see which one you like more or captures the beauty of your pot a little bit more. Mm -hmm. The way that you would like it to be shown. Yeah. I'd love to do this new, this new like, for our YouTubers, what people are looking on YouTube right now. <laughs> i love to do one of these. I just figured this out. I feel like a kid in candy store, right? We're like... I'll take a picture here. I'll uh -huh. take a picture here. I'll do one of these. I okay. might even put the front, the front like this. top, side. Right. Okay, I'm just saying for our listeners. Okay, right. But then I'll put it in like like uh, portrait mode. Uh -huh. And I'll take one of these. Oh, from the bottom to the from top. From the bottom to the top. Right there. <laughs> top oh, I love it so much. And you, you get this feeling of depth where you're looking up at almost a skyscraper. Yeah. And I, I love it so much. Mm. So much. That's fun. It's That's my fun. new one. Yeah. It's my new yeah, one. Yeah. And of course, I take a picture of the bottom, bottom of the pot. So mm -hmm. you see the maker's mark and you see how I treated it and you see the footwork and things of that nature. Yeah. And those are my three main, three or four mm. main. To be honest, I'm really lazy when it comes to taking pictures. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It is. I pretty much now, I think especially because... Instagram and you know TikTok have made short form video so much more important. Yeah. What I tend to do is I take one photo that's mostly completely front facing like like the camera is almost completely front facing to the to the front of the mug, but it's angled up just slightly so oh, that you see. can see the inner part oh. of of the of the lip. I see. Yeah, so you're just angled into the mouth a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, okay. just very very slightly. Yeah. And I pretty much take just one photo now. I don't, I used to take a bunch of different angles, but now I, I don't just because I don't think it's necessary when you can all just as easily post a video where you're actually showing the cup moving in your hand. I would rather take a video doing that and post that than have to take and edit like three photos per mug. So when I'm doing Etsy updates, I take a photo that I think is going to give the best quick impression of the shape and form and style of the cup. So I do I do less less stylized photos. Like I think you tend to lean more towards yeah. like stylized photos where it's like you're playing with angles and perception yeah, more. I do, yeah. I tend to want to go with, okay, what's one photograph that is gonna if someone's browsing on Etsy, and again, I'll be switching to my own website soon, but point being, if someone's looking through my website what is the photo that is gonna give someone the fastest impression of what this cup looks like? Can I be, can I be a little toxic? Go for it. Can I be a tiny bit toxic? Okay, go for it. I take so many pictures of my pottery knowing that nobody's gonna watch them. Why is that toxic? 
because I do more effort than I know. It's like, it's like when I put a bunch of extra information in the description below my YouTube videos. Yeah. And I still get DMs of like, oh, where's your glazing account? Oh, oh where's your, oh, the, oh, where's your yeah, yeah. oh, you didn't mention, oh, you didn't source this person. And I'm like, I did. It's in the description oh. below. And you guys don't read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's and so every now and then i get a, a a comment of people who who are like hey i would like to see more angles of the pot and i'm like i took like four oh, angles okay so you're of the pot like why and i feel i feel a, a little bit jealous actually because you take like the meat pictures <laughs> and i'm over here with potatoes and fruit along with the sides <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, why am I doing all this extra work for people who don't who don't appreciate it or even bother to look for it? Yeah, I mean, hey, like, what's your glazy profile? I post it down in the show notes of my YouTube video every single time. Yeah, the same amount of effort it took to message me was the same amount of effort it would take to look down below. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think I don't think you're alone in that frustration. Oh. I think a lot of people are frustrated by. Folks not not Why? looking or not reading about. Why am stuff, I taking more pictures for y'all? I mean, dude, honestly, just don't. Like, okay, to be honest, I used to I used to take more photos, but now I think because I have enough of a like to some degree enough of a following that I think people kind of get a sense of what my work is yeah. like because they're like because mo most of the time like since my work luckily tends to sell pretty quickly when I do do updates, I feel like I'm not. Okay, and I admit, this is me being lazy. Like, 100%, it would be better if I took more pictures. If I took a picture showing scale, a little, you know, banana for scale, you know, something like that. Yeah. Um, it, it probably would be better because it would give viewers more information. But what I tend to do is I take the one photo and then I take a video. Like, with Etsy, you can upload, like, a 15-second video. I'll just do that instead. I would never take a video. I, I prefer that compared to taking a bunch of photos, but... I used to take more photos when I had a smaller following mm -hmm. just because I think I had less of a developed presence and I had fewer, you know, like I didn't have as many reviews uh, as on, you know, as I do now on Etsy. So now if someone's looking at my work and they're like, okay, like, is this person's work good? They may only have one photo for reference, but then they've got like all the reviews for all the products so they can have a better sense. That, okay. This is like a well-made piece. And again, that's me kind of leaning on a crutch of, it's just, it's one of those areas that I have decided to allow myself to cut corners a little bit. I don't um, think it's and I, and I don't, and I, and I, and I don't, I don't think I've suffered negative repercussions since. Like if my sales started dropping, I'd probably be like, okay, maybe I need to upload more, more photos to yeah. give people a sense. But right now it's kind of like, okay, in terms of where I'd like to spend my time, mm -hmm. I'd rather take one photo, do a 10 second video, than take, than have to take a bunch of different photos of different angles. I don't think that's cutting corners. I think from, from your point of view and mine, I just put in more effort than need be, honestly. Mm. It's, yeah. it's that like, you're just more functional. You know, you're just like, this is the amount of effort it takes to get the job done. <laughs> I'm not just, this is the amount of effort I'm going to give to get the job done. <laughs> Especially for me, I, I feel some sort of way about going above and beyond and then not yeah. like the manager's like, why'd you do that? We didn't uh, need you to do all that extra ass work. I was going to get the pot anyway. Mm. You know, I have maybe like four mugs left on my website right now. Yeah. And my brain tells me like, if you took one less picture per pot, you probably would have sold the same amount. Yeah, they probably would have bought it still. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can always you can always experiment. You know, take fewer, save yourself time. Because again, there's so much there's so much that we need to do, and only so much time of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if we would like to sleep and keep our mental health in a good <laughs> spot. So yeah. I think we all have to kind of make decisions about where we're gonna you know where we're gonna save time where we can. I have to take a couple extra pictures on the side as well. Yeah, because you know Sammy, you mess. Yeah, up, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. Sammy loves spreadsheets, and I, like, offhandedly mentioned to her one day, I was like, man, I need, like, a place where I can, like, put pictures of my pots, uh -huh. and I can, because half the time I experiment with glazes, and then I'm like, did I test this glaze combo already? Oh, yeah. <sighs> I should have <gasps> taken notes. Yeah. Right, but realistically, when I'm doing it, I'm like, I'll remember. No, you won't. Well, no. No, you won't. No. Yeah, me lying to myself, <laughs> right? But, like, Sammy got, I don't think she got tired of it, but I think she got excited at the aspect of helping me and making a spreadsheet because yeah. she loves spreadsheets. Oh, spreadsheets are great. So now whenever I experiment, I'm like, oh, I gotta take a picture. I'm gonna get in trouble if I don't take a picture. <laughs> That's great. I'm That's trouble. great. I gotta take a picture.